All right then gang, so occasionally when we're creating Flutter apps, we're gonna need to add in some complex functionality. Now that could be to implement some form of animation or maybe to work with files and folders on the device or something else that is gonna require us to write a fair amount of code and logic. Now I suppose we could do all of this ourselves from scratch or we could make use of Flutter packages. Now, Flutter packages are basically just bundles of code and logic that other developers have already kindly written and which can normally be used to implement some kind of specialized functionality inside our own apps, like a sliding menu or a date picker or some kind of file uploader or something like that. Now, we can use as many different packages as we want in our apps to do different things for us. The one that we're going to be using inside this video is going to be the HTTP package, which is going to allow us to easily handle HTTP requests to third party APIs. Now, eventually, we're going to be using a third party API to get time information for different world locations. But we could use this package to make any kind of network request to different APIs or endpoints. So. What I'm going to do is, first of all, come to this address, pub.dev forward slash flutter, and then I'm going to search for a package called HTTP and press enter. And we can see the result right here. Now, there's going to be quite a few different results. And you see this little circle over here. This is the score of this particular package. Now, the higher the number, generally the better it's going to be. Not always the case, but it's a good indicator. There's different measurements that determine this score, things like popularity, um, how often bugs are fixed, things like that. But anyway, this is the one that we want, HTTP. And you've got a little readme here, which kind of shows you how to do some of the basic things. And we also have this score tab, which I talked about. These are the different areas it scores the package on. So we get 100, which is good. And you can see over here, installing. And this is how to install the actual package. So it says here, add this to your package pubspec.yaml file. So all we need to do is grab that line of code right here and then go to our editor and add it in. Okay then, so now we need to go to our pubspec file down here and we need to scroll down to where it says dependencies. Now at the minute we just have this, but we need to go down to the next line and tab in one and we just paste in the HTTP one like so. So this right here is the version number. This carrot basically means that if there's a newer version, when we get this package, just install that newer version, newer minor version anyway. So let's save this. And what I'm gonna do is cross this off and then say get dependencies over here. So that's gonna go out and get that package for us and install it so we can use it inside our project. OK, so it's finished now, so we can close this down. So what I'm actually going to do is get all of this stuff here where we have this get data function and this init state function. And I'm going to cut it from the choose location state object because really we're going to load the data initially from the loading screen. So I'm going to save this now and then I'm going to go to the loading widget over here and I'm going to paste it inside this state object instead. So now we have this init state function inside here, which is going to run when the widget first starts. And we're going to get rid of this print statement. We don't need that, but we still have this get data function and it's up here, still asynchronous. But now let's get rid of this stuff inside it and actually use the HTTP package to make a network request to get some data. Now, for now, we're not going to get the actual time data. We're going to use an API, which is called JSON placeholder. And it's just going to get us back some fake JSON, some dummy data, if you like. And basically, we're going to use an endpoint, which looks something like this. And we're going to get some data back, which is a to do. We'll do that in a minute. But first of all, we need to import the HTTP package into this file so we can use it. So we say import and then we want package. And then we want the HTTP package. So just do that one right there. OK, sorted. Now we can use this. Now, the way we use this is by saying get and then in parentheses, whatever the endpoint is that we want to get data from. Now, the endpoint we just saw on this website, by the way, I'll leave this link down below so you can use it as well. This is the endpoint to get some data and this is going to return to us some JSON data. So let me grab that and paste it in here. 
Now, JSON works really well with JavaScript, but we can also work with it in Dart and other programming languages as well. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So our objects that we get back from this look very much like JavaScript objects. So what we're going to do is now store this in some kind of variable. Now, to do that, we have to say await because we want this to finish before we store the value. And then we're going to store this inside a response object like so. So the response type here is actually given to us by the HTTP module, and it's going to contain information about this response that we get from this request. Now, one bit of information about the response is going to be the body of the response. That's the actual data that we get back. So what I'm going to do is print it down here by saying response dot body. So let's have a look at this in action. What I'm going to do is actually go over to the main.dart and I'm going to change this initial route to be just a forward slash and that's going to load up the loading widget, which is what we want to happen because this is the widget with all of this code inside it. So let me save that now and then we're going to go down here and we're going to hot restart and minimize that. So hopefully when it loads, it gets the loading screen. Now, if we keep this open, you're going to see we get this data back. This is the stuff that is now printing down here. It's the response body. Now, this looks very much like a map, right? But it's actually not a map. If we try to get one of these individual properties, for example, the user ID, this is not going to work. Watch this user ID. If we save this and we can already see that we don't have this property on this body, but if we save it, then it's not going to work and we get an error. And that's because this is not actually a map or an object of any kind. It's a string. And that string looks like an object, but it's actually not an object. It's a string representation of that object. And that's what basically JSON is. So this is a JSON string and we need to convert it into some kind of format that we can use. So what we can do is actually use a method or a function called JSON decode. But to do that, we have to import something. So I'm going to say import and then I'm going to say convert. And it's this one right here, Dart convert. And this allows us to convert this JSON string that we get back from this request into data that we can work with. So we can do stuff like this. So what I'm going to do is delete that right there. And we're going to delete this print statement as well. And instead, what we're going to do is decode this JSON string by saying JSON decode like so and then pass the response body in. Now we can only use this function right here because we imported this. Okay, so if we don't import this, we can't use this. So this is actually now gonna to return to us some data that we can use, and it's gonna be a map. So I can say map, and then data is equal to this thing. And now if we print the data, which is now the map, it's gonna look pretty much the same, but I'm gonna save it anyway and come to the run tab over here and I'm gonna hot restart so that we can get this data again. And after a second or two, now we can see this data looks very similar. Now it's all on one line, but if we try now to print one of the properties, we can do. So I can say now print and then we want the data and then in square brackets, remember that's how we can get values from keys inside maps. We pass in the key here so I could get the title, for example, and that is going to get us this thing right here. So let me now save this and hot restart. And we should see that in a second. OK, so now we get the actual data and just the title as well. So that was pretty simple, right? So all we're doing is creating an asynchronous function. We're using this package right here so that we can use the get function. And this get function goes out and gets data from an endpoint. We await the response of that and store it in this response object of type response. On that response object, we have a body property, and that body property is the actual JSON string that we get back from this. We then decode that JSON string into a map stored in data. We then print that data and the title property from that data. So we can actually do something with this data now. So now we've seen how to use this kind of asynchronous code and the HTTP package and how they work together in Flutter. Let's try now getting the data we actually need for this application using the World Time API.